I'm composer Helen Caddick. I've been asked to create a composition inspired by the JMW Turner Adventures in Colour exhibition. As a composer in my work, I'm fascinated with the idea of using art to create music and inspire music. And when I was asked to do this piece, I began by looking at tiny miniatures of the paintings that were going to be in the exhibition. I was really drawn to the watercolours in particular. I loved the fleeting energy and the lightness of touch that they had. I felt they could be threaded together to form a fictional narrative and that's the route that I've decided to go down with the music. So this is the first painting in the series of five, Blue Moonlight Over Yellow Sands, which Turner painted in 1824. What I really liked about this painting was the sense of calmness and stillness. And I felt as if it had space in it which music could breathe. You almost can see another sea beyond the first sea, so it's got this sense of mystery about it. And the blueness of the colours that Turner used made me think of clarinets. And I felt very strongly that it would be lovely to have water creating the sound at the very opening of the whole piece. So I chose to have the cellist and the bassist in bow wine glasses filled with water, which combined with the harmonics on the violin would give this beautiful sound quality and this hushed, sound and magic to the beginning of Hayes. So once the journey begins in the paintings with a sailing boat off Deal, I knew I wanted the music to sound more like the boat was heading into choppy water. So I have this little theme idea. So that little idea over it, I will add. So the two together will give that really lovely cross rhythm, that feeling that you're going on the current on the sea. In the lead up to writing the pieces, I also researched quite a lot about Turner and one of the things that I really thought was fascinating was the way that he worked. Because he, alongside his notes in his sketchbooks and his drawings and artworks, he would pen poems and write lots of different things that inspired him. And I actually work in a very similar way. I will gather quotes and ideas and alongside my snippets of music that I write, and I'm a bit like a musical magpie, always collecting things that I think I could use or that inspire me.
where I write is up in a tiny little room in the attic and quite often the seagulls are singing around the attic so I've put some seagull sounds in there and the kind of sounds that you hear along this coastline. One of the things that I found very interesting reading about Turner and his approach was that he was fascinated with all the advances in science that were going on around him. And when he was six years old, I'd read that Uranus was discovered and later on in his lifetime, so was Neptune. And when I was a child, my earliest memory is of my dad teaching me about the planets with the torch and the orange is the world and the grapefruit is the sun. And my fascination with the idea that we were a planet in a massive universe has always stayed with me, that wonder and awe of looking at the skies and Turner's fascination with the relationship with the sea and the sky and his absolute love of the East Coast, which I also relate to because I live here, I live on this coast. So this painting is the third painting in the series of five that I chose. The blue moonlight over yellow sands that we saw before, Turner painted in 1824. This one he painted in 1835 to 40, and I think it's really interesting seeing the scope of his work and seeing examples of his work over this 20 year period. And what I love about this painting is so tiny that it speaks volumes, it captures the way that the sea can change in seconds and become so threatening. And during the writing of Hayes, I've read quite a lot of books by Tove Jansen, and she's particularly adept at describing storms. And there was a quote in one of her books, the sea began to shiver in dread and expectation, which I felt Turner represented brilliantly in this painting. And the single sailing boat on the horizon battling against the storm brewing and all that energy and rhythm and movement I really wanted to capture in the music of Hayes. Storm off the East Coast is just full of drama. You really get this sense that Turner was stood right here in this storm because the canvas, the paper looks rain spattered. And I love the fact that the sea is dancing. You get that real sense of drama. And again, the boat battling against the storm, and you can almost see the figure of the man in that boat. But everything is jagged and broken up and fractured. And in Hayes, the trumpet is that man in that boat. He is the one battling against the elements. And you hear him trying to sustain a melody, but it keeps getting broken up by the whips of the sea against the side of the boat and the storm just lashing the boat, giving it everything.
This is the fifth painting in the five that I chose. I absolutely love this painting. It's called Sunset Over the Sea. To me, it epitomises that connection that Turner had with the science of the day at the time that he was living. And with all the colour theories that were going around, I think that it was Newton's theory, optics, that all colour comes from a light source of refracted light that I thought and feel that I see in this painting. And the very fact that the sun is off centre, I think, as well as deliberate by Turner, because around that same time, discoveries were made in the way that the planets travel around the sun, that they don't travel around in a perfect circle. They kind of do an off-centre loop around the sun. And I think that's why he's got the sun off-centre here. So in the music, I wanted to have this sense of the music beginning from a single point in the score and gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more anthemic, as if that's Turner's legacy that still continues today. The day of the rehearsal and handing the parts over to the musicians and hearing Hayes for the first time is always really, really exciting because it's a bit like giving a detailed pencil drawing over and hearing it suddenly become a full-blown colour photograph. And to me, the score itself is a bit like a blueprint of a house. It doesn't become a home until you add all the curtains and the fabrics and all the other things that go into it. And the musicians and the instruments in Canty Quorum are that fabric. I've scored it for violin, cello and double bass. And I've scored it for flute doubling on piccolo, trumpet doubling on flugelhorn, clarinet doubling on bass clarinet. Because to me, they represent a myriad of colours. When I hear the violin, it makes me think of yellow. When I think of the trumpet, I think of red. The clarinet is definitely blue and the cello and the bass are, can be a variety of colours as can the piano. So I wanted that sense of stillness before we begin our journey and the boat chugs along and hits choppy seas and then calm seas and then the seas begin to get rougher and the sky darkens. We hit a storm before we finally have the sunset. Turner's dying words were the sun is God and because of that statement, I really do think that with all the different colour theories that were around at the time, the one that had come out a while before Turner was born, that all colour comes from the source of light, I think resonated the most with Turner.